So, Gore Vidal, Perpetual War for Perpetual Peace, page 43. I became interested in Timothy McVeigh and vice versa. Once we meditate upon the unremitting violence of the United States against the rest of the world while relying upon pretexts as that for sheer flimsical flimsiness might have even even given Hitler pause when justifying some of his most bourgeois lies one begins to understand why Osama struck at us from aboard abroad in the name of one billion Muslims whom we have encouraged through our own preemptive acts of war as we as relentless demonization of them through media to regard us in how shall I put it less than an ambient light in the five years pre previous to Dark Tuesday I had I had I had got to know the McVeigh case pretty well in the five decades previous to that as an enlisted soldier in world war ii as well as a narrator of our imperial history i think i've always had an up close view of the death struggle between the american republic whose defender i am and the american global empire our old republic's enemy osama provoked provoked struck at us from afar mcveigh provoked struck struck at us from within on april 19 1995 each was enraged by our government's reckless assault upon other societies as we pursued what a great american historian has called perpetual war for perpetual peace i must admit that at first I was not very interested in the bombing of the Mur Mur Mura build federal building in Oklahoma City because the media had so quickly and thoroughly attributed this crime crime to that stock American villain, the lone crazed killer, an axe out an axe of mad madmen are only interesting to the morbidly inclined. Also, wise Henry James had always warned writers against the use of a mad person as central to a narrative on the ground that as he was not morally responsible there was no true tale to tell it was oklahoma city that first caught my interest it was such an unlikely place for such an astonishing to happen in 1907 my grandfather thomas Pryor gore brought the state into the union he was also elected uh, its first senator and served until 1937 i spent my first 10 years in his house in rock creek park washington dc reading to him he was behind blind from childhood i was brought up surrounded by the founders of a state that was sometimes known as the belt buckle of the bible belt ironically my grandfather with was an atheist a well-kept secret back home also at the time of the first world war oklahoma was a base simultaneously for the ku klux klan and for the socialist party plainly an eclectic gathering place when the mirror building was destroyed i re misread the name as murray after alfalfa bill murray the state's first governor who wrote a history of the world without as uh, without it was said ever leaving the state or cracking a book in a this desultory way i began to follow the trail of mcveigh the font uh, the font of received wisdom the new york times true to his own great tradition found him guilty from the start perhaps they were for once i foolishly thought acting in good faith but as the story unfolded it got more and more incredible finally we were invited to believe that a single slight youth with possible help from a john doe never found by the fbi and an elusive 
equally slight co-conspirator concocted a fairly complex bomb, single-handedly loaded several thousand pounds of it onto a rider truck, drove it to the Mira, Mira Federal Building without blowing himself up. Northern Ireland is littered with the remains of IRA bombers who frequented rough roads with similar bombs and then detonated it next to a next to a mini windowed building on a bright morning unseen this all defied reason once found guilty however mcveigh said that he had done it all alone to avenge the government's slaughter of a religious cult at waco texas in a short statement to the court before sentence was passed he quoted supreme court justice brandis Brandis's magnificent descent in Olmsted. Yeah. This caught my attention. Brandis was warning government that it was the teacher of the nation, and when government broke laws, it set an example that could lead only to um, imitation and anarchy. Meanwhile, concerned by the airy way that various departments of our government were tidily cleaning away the bill of rights corner by corner as it were i wrote the following report for the for the variety fair issue of november 1998 which mcveigh by then on death row in colorado read and then wrote me a letter thus began our correspondence which culminated in his invitation for me to witness as his guest his execution by lethal injection i said i would here is the piece he read in prison oh so this is the mcveigh the next part he gets into no let's not read this because so this is goes up to page 49 is what timothy mcveigh wrote but i and it's a long piece so i don't want to i don't want to break it i really don't but what i want to do is read so if you want to read it sh sh uh, shredding the bill of rights okay but what I want to do is read Timothy McVeigh's. Oh, I lost the place where it was at. Tim's Bill of Rights. Okay, so we're going to skip to page 133. Okay. And what we're going to do, and it's just two and a half pages. Okay, two and a half pages. And we're going to read... Uh, Tim's Bill of Rights from reprinted in Gore Vidal's Perpetual War for Perpetual Peace. And one thing I should note here, the corporate media in the United States and the Western world never ever, if I recall correctly, printed anything that Timothy McVeigh had to say. They crucified him, persecuted him, demonized him, called him a lunatic even before he was convicted. Right, before any evidence was given uh, okay so one of the reasons Gore Vidal wrote this book is because he he believed it was important that Timothy McVeigh's words were shared to prove that he wasn't a lunatic and there was a reason why he did or he did what he did okay Tim's Bill of Rights. One, neither speech, press, religion, nor assembly shall be infringed, nor shall such be forced upon any person by the government of the United States. Two, there shall be no standing military force during peacetime. This to include large bodies of federal law enforcers or coalitions of these 
officers that would constitute a min military force with the exception of sea-based maritime forces. Three, the executive office shall hold no power to unilaterally alter constitutional rights. Four, no person shall be subjected to any form of direct taxation or wage withholding by the federal government. Five, no person's life or liberty shall be taken without due process. Any government employee circumventing due process rights shall be punished with imprisonment. Citizens shall not be subjected to invasion of their homes or property by employees of federal government. Property or other assets of United States citizens shall not be subject to forfeiture to the federal government. Six, personal activities that do not infringe upon the rights or property of another shall not be charged, prosecuted, or punished by the United States government. Any crime alleged will be prosecuted by the ju jurisdiction most local to the alleged crime, respectively. No person shall be twice tried for an offense alleged and adjudicated in another jurisdiction no person shall be subjected to cruel or unusual punishment nor shall shall the federal government hold power to execute any individual as punishment for a crime convicted or contract to another entity for this purpose no person shall be held to account for the actions of another unless proven by more than one witness to be the principal figure seven all currency sh currency shall be redeemable in a globally recognized material of intrinsic value such as silver eight legislative members shall earn no more than twice the current poverty level and shall not be subject to any additional pay bonuses rewards gifts entitlements or other such privileges as holding such office is meant to serve the people and should not be looked upon as a capital capitalist career opportunity nine where non-violent checks and balances fail to remedy government abuse or tyranny the common people reserve the right to rebellion inherent with this right the common people maintain the absolute right to own and possess those weapons which are used by any level of government for domestic pol policing 10 any rights not enumerated here belong inherently to the people or the state respectively and shall not be assumed by omission to be delegated to the ju jurisdiction of the federal government timothy mcveigh may 28th 2001 okay every american as far as i'm concerned needs to read this book if you're a citizen of the united states of america do yourself a favor read this book gore vidal perpetual war for perpetual peace how we got to be so hated and it's not just about how we got to be so hated by outside powers there is a lot of meaning to this book a lot of history a lot of important words it's a quick read